Jack of Junkies. What's going on, everyone? Really appreciate you guys and gals for clicking on the video. We got some new rods in, and I'm not really making this video to show you guys all the new rods that I got. A lot of these you've seen already. I just got maybe some different powers and things like that. I mean, I did get a few new ones you guys haven't seen. Just, just to give you guys a quick, quick rundown. Like this one here, this is a Tatula. Tatula rod, one of my first Tatula rods. 610 spinnerbait rod, okay? And that's something I'm kind of looking for this year. Kind of like the ultimate spinnerbait rod. You guys know one of my go-tos, one of my favorites really, is this Akuma TCS rod. It's an all-purpose 6.9. It's a medium heavy, mod fast, super light rod, fun rod, great for single hook moving baits, my go-to underspin rod, again, great for spinner baits. But I really only like like a quarter and a three eighths ounce spinner bait on this rod. It'll handle half ounce. But I do believe each rod kind of has like a sweet spot. And for me, when I put a half on this rod, it's not as accurate. I don't really believe it overloads the rod, but it's I just think three eighths is kind of where it needs to be on this rod, okay? And we all have our preferences. Just for me, three eighths and below on this rod, okay? So I'm kind of looking for that, that half ounce spinnerbait rod, okay? And I've kind of dabbled in glass rods, okay? One of the first ones I ever held was a Dobbins. And guys, uh, I'm not ripping on any of these rods. They're just, I didn't like them, okay? And I never owned a Dobbins glass rod, but I held them and right away didn't care for the weight of the rod. But that's what you're going to notice with a glass rod. They're a bit bigger in diameter. You know, they're, it's a bigger, fatter rod, but they also are a heavier rod. Some of them are tip heavy. It just depends how the rod is made. Like the one I have from Kistler, I believe they call it a feel and reel. And I believe just the upper portion of that rod is glass, which makes it really tip heavy. I didn't care for that rod at all. But, um, some of the other ones that I've tried are the KVD. This is the CC3. Not sure which one this is. Composite. So again, it's a glass rod. 7.1, medium heavy, moderate. So this one here, it's okay. I mean, it definitely is a, a bigger rod, but it, it's heavy. It's on the heavy side. This one here and the one from 13 Fishing, I got a video on that one as well. The new G-Man rod. It's very similar to this rod, kind of the same same weight again just very very heavy um Daiwa, now this one here i brought this one just to show you guys this is a glass rod okay and this is really one of the the thinner glass rods that i've owned this is the tattoo elite 7.2 uh brent ayler it's a 7.2 a small medium crank again it's a glass rod it says right there yeah mrb dash g so it's, it's a glass rod but this one here is probably the most comfortable to date for me as far as a glass rod goes. It feels more like a graphite rod. You know, I, I, it's heavier, obviously, but it still has that feel to it, for me at least, all right? It's not as heavy as the others. You know, right away I held the others like, oh man. And you really wouldn't think because, I mean, the rod itself, it's, it's not heavy. It's not a heavy rod, right? But when you compare it to, you know, a graphite rod, this is my Akuma Guide Select, my cranking rod that I use. When you compare it to a graphite rod, man, there's like a night and day difference. And that's something I never really, you know, I never really look at when I'm buying a rod or a reel is the weight. I don't care what it weighs. But when you pick up a glass rod, you know you're holding a glass rod. I mean, they are heavy. And the reason you really want a glass rod, they're super, super soft. They're more parabolic. They're soft basically from the tip down to the butt section. And you just lose less fish with them. You know, it's a nice soft rod. It allows the fish to get the bait. You keep them pinned. But still with a, a cranking rod, with a graphite cranking rod, you're still getting the same deal. You know, this is my, like I said, my Akuma one here. They're more than, more than soft. They're plenty soft, right? But it's graphite, so it's not near as heavy, but it's more sensitive as well. I do like to have a bit more feel in my cranking rods. And again, you know, I just don't want the heavy rod, basically. But as long as you have a soft action, all right, soft action for your cranking rod, you're good, whether it be graphite or glass. But again, that glass, they're just, 
they're more soft. You, you are going to land more fish with a glass rod compared to a, to a graphite, okay? But like I said, there's, there's pros and cons to both. This depends what you like. So anyways, like I said, I tried the KVD and the 13 Fishing, the Kistler. Did try the Dobbin as far as feeling those in hand. The Daiwa. I was like, you know what, I'm going to try one more. Because a lot of you guys have recommended this brand to me. Okay? So I ordered a couple. Now these are, before I show them to you, these are, um, it's a bladed jig crankbait rod. Okay? And one of them I plan to use for a bladed jig. But the other one I do plan to use for a spinnerbait, okay? But like I said, a lot of you guys have, have mentioned these rods to me or suggested them. And I picked a couple up and I tell you what, first feel, I haven't used these obviously, I just opened them up 10 minutes ago. But the first impressions, they do feel good. I mean, it's, it's probably the best feeling glass rod that I've had in hand. These are... These are the Evergreen Combat Sticks. I know these GoPros don't focus worth a darn, but that's the Evergreen Combat Sticks. Picked up a couple of them. These are my first Evergreen rods. And I gotta, I gotta say, just first impressions, feel in hand, these are the most comfortable glass rods that I've, I've had in hand. So definitely really happy with the feel, obviously. Time all the water with them, we'll do a review, I'll let you guys know my thoughts. But this is why I wanted to do this video. If you guys are on the fence, if you want a glass rod, I haven't used a ton of them, obviously, but out of the five or six that I've used, if I could pick one as far as how they feel in hand, the best feel overall, it would be this one. So, super nice feeling rod in hand. And they call it a combat stick, and I tell you what, it's... It seems built really well. I mean, all the guides are even all the way up to the top there. They're all that, um, what do they call that? Triple, triple foot guides. So nice guides on there. We got some uh, EVA foam. Obviously your hook keeper there. I like the EVA foam there on the, uh, on the nut, on the real seat nut. I like that. Looks like EVA here down at the bottom as well. And you can see it's a it's a bit on the fatter side. It's not as fat as the KVD or the 13 Fishing, but it's a bit bigger than that Daiwa. But overall though, it does feel fantastic in hand. And like I said, I'm looking for like the best half ounce and up spinnerbait rod. Because I'm gonna start throwing a bit more of the halves, but I picked up some three quarters I wanna play, play with as well. So I needed a rod that could handle those. And this one right here, this is the, it's a heavy power, it's a moderate slow, and it's a glass, and the lure rating is half ounce to two ounce, okay? So it starts at a half. And when you're picking a rod for a, for a lure weight, you at least want to meet the minimum, okay? So this is a half ounce for the minimum weight rating, so I wouldn't want to put a quarter on here. I'm not saying I couldn't throw it, but as far as casting goes, the rod's going to perform better when you meet that minimum weight rating. You at least need that weight to load the tip to get a good cast. Usually, if you're underweight, it's not going to load as well. It's going to cause a backlash and things like that. So you, you at least need to meet the minimum weight rating. Unless you're really experienced, it's not that important, but it definitely helps to meet the minimum there. But like I said, this one here is a half ounce, so this is going to be my, uh, at least I'm going to experiment with it for half ounce and up spinner baits. And it's a 6'8". I really wanted a shorter rod. You guys know I fish pretty stained and muddy water, so I'm more target fishing. I'm not in open water just fan casting looking for fish. I'm around stumps, laydowns, dock posts, things like that. So I wanted a nice short rod, so I'm more accurate with it. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a nice soft rod. I mean, you can see here, just putting a little bit of pressure on it, we're bending all the way down to here. So these glass rods are definitely more of a parabolic rod compared to your graphite rods. But yeah, man, in hand, it feels, it feels fantastic. You can see by that tip there, the shaking that tip. It's a, it's a very soft action rod. So I picked up that one, and the plan was for spinnerbaits. But I might try 
some bladed jigs and maybe some shallow cranking with it as well. But then I stepped up to the seven footer for bladed jigs. Uh, same deal, it's a heavy power. Looks like uh, action is M slow, so moderate slow action. And the um, lure rate is three eighths to an ounce and a half. I, I have, I'm over here, I have the camera <laughs> turned a little bit because sometimes my head ends up being in the light and that kind of messes with you guys there. So I gotta keep watching where I'm at there. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, so this one is three eighths to an ounce and a half and I plan to use this one for, for bladed jigs. I wanted something that started there at three eighths. I didn't want something too heavy just because for the most part, I throw a half ounce bladed jig the most. But same deal, and this one just a little bit longer. Well, we got four inches longer on here. This one actually, it feels better than this one here. The shorter rod, yeah, to me the shorter rod actually feels a bit stiffer. I'm not sure if that's just because the weight rating is heavier. If it's got maybe a bit stiffer tip on it, it feels a little more tip heavy. But this seven footer actually feels a bit better in hand. But uh, yeah, so it's gonna be, you know, bladed jigs. I'll probably throw some shallow cranks on it as well. What do they have? They have uh, something on the tags there. Um, and let me tell you too, so I'm sure you guys might ask this. On the seven footer as well, these are all like a triple foot guide on there. Okay. But uh, there's the tags here. I think this is a seven footer, yeah. The seven footer, uh, if you guys are curious on the price too, these are two, 229 okay and it's the crankbait moving versatile seven footer there's all the specs there you guys i'll just hold that up there you guys can, can see that but you can see it's a perfect match it says for basically crankbaits and on the six eight it's got uh the jackhammer buzz bait and of course uh square bill as well but i'm thinking yeah at 6.8, I think it's going to be a great, a great spinnerbait rod. And like I said, we'll play around with some cranks with it as well and bladed jigs and all that. But I think this is going to be my go-to half ounce and up spinnerbait rod. I mean, I think the search is over. Search is over. This is probably going to be the last glass rod that I buy or that I test out. If I get any more, I'll probably get them in this series. But uh, this one here does feel the best to me in hand as far as the ones that I've I felt go so anyways give you guys another look at that rod it's green beautiful rod to get it out in the sun looks like it's got a lot of flake in there not sure what reel I'm gonna put on here but uh, yeah it's a green evergreen combat sticks definitely a good name for it it feels like it's a well well built rod yeah I'm digging it man I'm digging it so hopefully you guys are looking forward to a review on these rods I'm really looking forward to using them like I said these are my first evergreen rods pretty excited about that something else I did seen I didn't know it um, I seen zillion or die with zillion rod was released I seen that on tackle warehouse actually this morning I'm going through tackle warehouse I told you guys I'm making a monthly order I'm getting ready to make my March order you guys seem to really like February. I'm trying to do that every single month. Spend like 100, 150 bucks, get a lot of the new release stuff. We'll do a video on it, do some reviews and all that. And two, it's just nice to be able to see those baits on the camera versus online. I'm kind of having that trouble right now when I'm picking out baits. I'm not really sure of the color. So again, I'm trying to make that easier for you guys. You know, I'll pick up majority of the new stuff. You guys want to buy it. Maybe I'll have it. You guys can get a better idea of the colors and, and my opinion on the baits and, and just things like that. But if there's anything you guys want me to try for March, let me know down below. I'm, right now, I'm looking at a lot of the Spro jig. I'll tell you, that Spro swim jig looks killer. The new Arc West Logan swim jig, I'm going to pick some of those up. But let me know down below some things you guys want me to try. I'll pick them up. If I don't get them this month, I'll get them next month. So keep a lookout for that video. And just so you guys can find them easy, I think for the, for the February one I put on there, new releases, February, Tackle Warehouse order, I'll do the same for March and so on. So anyways, guys, that's really all I wanted to talk about today. If you guys are in the market for a glass rod, at least for me, the evergreen so far does feel the best in hand. But like I said, time on the water will tell 
just how good it is. But keep a lookout for that review in the future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to smash that thumbs up. Love you guys, and we will see you guys on the next one.